Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mr. P. Whatever time you are watching, I hope you're doing well. My name is Destiny, and I'm going to be speaking on my essay about the Marvelettes. So throughout the decades, the music industry has flourished beautifully, from rhythm and blues, soul, soft rock, classic to pop and hip hop, and so much more genres. Um, most listeners become fond to these genres of music due to the beat of the music, relation towards the lyrics, or just how some songs make us feel. When it comes to bands or groups in the music industry, it also applies. The difference is multiple personalities and talents coming together to make beautiful music as well. There are so many amazing bands and groups in the Motown Records industry, but the group that stood out to me the most were the Marvelettes. Um, I think Marvelettes stood out to me the most because they're all group, they're an all girl group and they originated for a talent show in high school. Unfortunately, not every single member of the Marvelettes is still in the Marvelettes or even alive to this day. Such as Wanda Young, she died due to chronic pulmonary disease, obstructive pulmonary dis disease, excuse me, at the age of 78 on the 15th of December in 2021. Georgia Dobbins had also passed away. She had went into a cardiac arrest on September 18th in 2020, also at the age of 78, reported on New York Times. Gladys Horton, the lead singer, died on January 26th of 2011 due to a stroke, um, reported on Rolling Stone. Katherine Anderson is the only reported Marvelette still alive to this day, and she's currently 78 years old. And this was reported on the historymakers.org. You can also see a live interview of Catherine um, explaining every question that they asked her in that interview and a biography, etc. So some of the Marvelettes' biggest hits were Don't Mess With Bill, When We're Young In Love, and Please Mr. Postman. And one of my personal favorites is Please Mr. Postman, written by Georgia Dobbins, Freddie Gorman, Ro Robert Bateman, William Garrett, and Brian Holland recorded and released by the Marvelettes in 1961. So in the song, the lead singer of the Marvelettes is waiting for a letter or card from her boyfriend who is at war. And she leaves us listeners intrigued by her anxiousness of no letter, of receiving no letter or card, fearfulness for her lover who is at war and in hopes that he will write to her, leaving us listeners to wonder if she's waiting in vain. So in the second stanza of the song, the lyrics describe her position waiting for her letter from her boyfriend. Gladys sings, Gladys sings, there must be some word today from my boyfriend so far away. Please, Mr. Postman, look and see, is there a letter, a letter for me? So in these lyrics, Gladys is highlighting that she's, you know, anxious question and in question of where this letter is, um, oblivious to why she hasn't received a letter. Um, despite the fact that the song has an optimistic tone, the music has a dreary cadency. For instance, when Gladys sings, please, Mr. Postman, look and see, is there a letter, a letter for me? While singing this, the annotation in her voice was calm but concerning, illustrating that she was concerned, that she is worried, excuse me. Not solely did the lyrics call attention to the anxiousness of waiting for this letter, but the lyrics also emphasize the fearfulness for her lover. So in stanza three and four of the song, the lyrics explain the fear Gladys has for her boyfriend who was at war in regards to not receiving any cards or letters. Gladys sings, I've been standing here waiting, Mr. Postman, so patiently for just a card or just a letter saying he's returning home to me. Please, Mr. Postman, look and see. Is there a letter in your bag for me? Please, please, Mr. Postman, why has it been a very long time since I've heard from this boyfriend of mine? So Gladys states in her lyrics, so patiently for just a card or just a letter saying he's returning home to me. Why has it been a very long time since I've heard from this boyfriend of mine? So these lyrics emphasize Gladys's fear because she's starting to question the postman 
how come I'm not getting any letters? How come not, I'm not getting any cards? How come I'm not hearing at all from my boyfriend, you know? So, um, she's just emphasizing the fear she has of getting no response in any type of way, no updates, um, and begins to question the postman. Listening to these lyrics, I can hear the change of her tone, like the change of tone as she's singing. Um, she becomes more apprehensive to the fact that there is no response, so she expresses that as she sings throughout the stanza. And her change of tone makes me think of R&B. Um, due to the drum machine backed rhythms, the pitch corrected vocals, and the um, the lush vocal arrangement, um, Gladys expresses her fearful fearfulness. Excuse me, throughout the song, but these stanzas in particular bring out that her boyfriend stated he is going to return to her and will write to her, but has not, has yet to return, has yet to even send a card or a letter. And um, this uh, makes Gladys to begin rethinking if he will return. Um, in addition to being anxious and fearful, she doesn't lose hope. She still strives that, the, that her boyfriend will write to her. So in stanza five, six, and seven, the lyrics illustrate that um, the lyrics illustrate her hope for receiving this letter. So Gladys belts out, so many days you passed me by, you saw the tears standing in my eye. You wouldn't stop to make me feel better by leaving me a card or a letter. Please, Mr. Postman, look and see. Is there a letter? Oh yeah, in your bag for me. Please, please, Mr. Postman, please check and see just one more time for me. You better wait a minute, wait a minute. Please, Mr. Postman, deliver the letter. The sooner, the better. In these lyrics, Gladys um, indicates that the postman should double check his bag. Um, there should be a letter in there for me. Um, can you please look again? Um, she believes that, that the card or letter is in there, that the postman just missed it, so he should double back and see. Listening to these lyrics, um, I can hear her crave just... Any type of update from her boyfriend, excuse me. Um, and I can hear like her vocal intensity going against the upbeat rhythm, the optimistic tone in the background. I can hear, I can hear her vocally going against that to still indicate that she is in vain. Um, I can hear her hope that she has for this card or letter that she should be receiving. And it emphasizes the rhythm section, hearing her, like I said, going against the optimistic tone, um, not in a depressive manner, but in a sad manner, sad tone going against the upbeat rhythm. Um, the Marvelettes main hook engaged me as a listener to become fond of the song. It engaged me to feel for the lead singer, like feel sorry, feel that type of pain. I've never been through that, but I, if I were in her shoes personally, I would. Um, in this case, I feel bad for Gladys not feel, um, hearing from her boyfriend who was at war. Solely due to the fact because he promised her, I know promises can be broken and everything, but he promised he would write, he promised he will return. And um, as that being the only way to contact during that period of time, I would also feel the same emotions that she was feeling. So as I listen to her heartache, confusion, fearfulness, and possibly thinking the worst, um, just by the tone of her voice and how she emphasizes these in these stanzas while performing, the style that this song is considered is R&B and soul. Um, it stirs towards these genres on account of the soulful lyrics and the meaning behind the song. So, due to the meaning and how she expresses herself to this upbeat tempo, it's considered soul. It may not sound soulful or R&B like we would normally think, um, but due to the rhythmic instruments in the background that's being used, 
and the meaning behind the song it is considered r&b and soul which is actually very cool to me because listening to that song you wouldn't think it's like soul you think it's like hip like oh upbeat no it's soul and r&b it's rhythm and blues lastly listening to the song made me feel sympathy towards her um so personally um i i've heard this song growing up i've never i never knew the true meaning of it i never sat sat and list like looked and listened to the lyrics i just sang went along with it um but finding out the true meaning kind of made my heart ache um because of the confusion and loneliness that she must have endured um throughout that period of time i actually never looked up or researched to see if she ever got a letter or a card but um uh personally if i were in her shoes at the time i would have felt the same as gladys did because if my sing signic excuse me if my significant other went off to war and the only way to contact each other was through post post mail and i received nothing and and they let me know i'll write you excuse me i'll return and I get no form of updates from them, I would be a little heartbroken and a little lonely and confused and scared for the sake of them. Um, excuse me. Um, but having no other form of contact besides post mail um, would bring me fear and anxiousness just as it did Gladys. And, um, yeah, so the lyrics that I'm actually going to be singing are in my essay. Um, excuse me, let me grab it. Okay. And they are going to be stanza. Excuse, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, I think I'll do stanza uh, five, six, and seven. Okay. So many days you passed me by. <clears throat> you saw the tears standing in my eye. You wouldn't stop to make me feel better by leaving me a card or a letter. Please, Mr. Postman, look and see. Is there a letter? Oh yeah, in your bag for me. Please, please, Mr. Postman. Please check in and see just one more time for me. You better wait a minute, wait a minute. Please, Mr. Postman. Deliver the letter, the sooner the better. So yeah, that um, that was stanza six. That was stanza five, six, and seven. Um, Thank you for listening. I hope you had a great day.